Hey everyone, I'm really excited to share five pro tips for working with photos inside of Photoshop. Now this episode has been sponsored by PPA, which is the Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners. When it comes to retouching, the healing brush is an incredibly useful tool. But the problem is sometimes when you get near the edges, you can see it turns it darker or it turns it lighter. And this can be quite annoying. Now I've heard of different solutions to fix it, but let me show you a solution that works every time. So the first thing we want to do is create a new layer because you don't want to be doing your retouching on your photo. So let's create the new layer. Then we're going to grab our healing brush tool. Now, if you want things to appear, make sure that you sample all layers or current and below. Otherwise, it's just going to appear blank. Okay, here's the problem. When we are cloning areas like here, let me hold down the Alt or the Option key and that will sample. And then we can click to paint. This is working pretty good here, right? But the minute we go into an area like this, notice it's just going lighter. It's not applying the darkening. It's smudging. Let me show you how to fix that. It's really simple. If you change the mode from normal to replace, this will work exactly like the clone stamp tool. So all I need to do now is just go smaller and literally just paint this in and notice as I paint this, no smudging, what you see is what you get. And so I'm not just painting with a brush because I want to get the texture here. So I'm just painting and picking it up and notice there's no smudging. And then of course we can go back to normal for other areas. Like maybe you want to just kind of clean up some of this noise in here. So what happens if you want to get rid of the sand on the road here in Dubai? Now, here's the challenge. If I create a new layer and I grab the clone stamp tool and I hold down the Alt or the Option key, I can begin to paint this. And it's actually going to work pretty well for a while. But notice what happens as I go up here. Notice the perspective is not matching anymore. So even if you look at the center as we go there, see how it's not getting smaller as we go further away. So that's a challenge, but it's easily solved. What we're going to do is we're going to use vanishing point. So choose filter vanishing point. So we can set this as perspective. So let's just tap once. Tap again. Let's make sure we're nice and horizontal. And then we're going to go in and set our perspective. Now it's hard to see in there, but if you hold down the X key, that will actually zoom in and it will enable us to see and set that nicely. When it turns blue, that means that we've set the perspective correctly. If we hadn't, it would be showing as red. And you can grab and drag any of those points at any time. Now, if we grab our clone stamp tool, we're now working inside a vanishing point. And now if we want to paint, just hold the Alt or the Option key. Let's do it on this yellow line so we can see where it is. And let's start there. And look at that. We just paint away in perspective. Resample often so we don't get repetitive patterns. Let's go from the white dot in the middle of the road. And see how we can quickly follow that perspective. Now just be careful not to pick up on those arrows because we probably don't want those appearing throughout the uh, image. So if we go here, look at this. See how that perspective just follows it all the way up. If it gets a little bit off there, it's very, very easy to just pick up and fix it. And that's how you clone in perspective. 
I want to tell you about a tool that not only helps me sharpen my skills as a photographer, but also helps me grow my business, and that's PPA, Professional Photographers of America. I'm a PPA member, and here's why you might want to join too. For a low monthly fee, you get unbeatable benefits, including $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, data recovery services, and education. But today, I want to highlight two benefits that will help keep money in your pocket. The first one is they partner with a bunch of vendors to get you great discounts. And these include Canon, Office Depot, B&H. Uh, so check out those exclusive discounts available to members. One of PPA's most useful business resources are the customizable contracts. And you can customize and use these contracts. There's things like model releases, cancellation letters, event contracts, copyright transfer, all of that is available. So take a look at the link in the description where you can get a discount on your membership. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, PPA is the place to help grow your business. Now here's something a lot of people don't realize. When you're sharpening, you have to be careful that you don't smudge the colors inside of the photo. Let me show you what I mean. Let me duplicate this twice, holding down Command J. And this is so I can show you before and after. So let's zoom in, double click the magnifying glass. It'll take us to 100%. And let's zoom in here. In fact, why don't we go in quite steep? Let's go all the way up to 200%. And this way you can really see what's going on. Now watch this railing. If I choose Filter Sharpen, and I'm going to choose the unsharp mask. I'm going to go pretty severe so you guys can really see what's going on. I'm going to apply that. Now, if we zoom out and we look at it before and after, you can see it's sharper. And let's zoom back in, but it's also got this color around the edge. You may or may not notice it at the moment. But let me show you. We're going to apply it again on this different layer, and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. Filter, sharpen. Let's choose the unsharp mask with the same settings. So we're not gonna change anything as far as the settings. Now here's the trick. Don't touch anything. What you wanna do is choose edit and fade. As long as you haven't applied any other filters, or any other tools, this fade option is gonna be available. Turn that on. And then we're gonna change this from normal to luminosity blending mode. The luminosity blending mode means that only the luminance of this photo, that would be the black and white information, will change and the color will be unchanged. Let's click OK. Now look at the railing here on this layer. Let me undo this layer and show you the previous layer. And this is the one where we just applied the Unshark without using luminosity. And look at the difference. Look at the green kind of color cast here on top of the roof. With luminosity, it's gone. Look around there. So you're going to see these edge fringing and just weird colors being added when you sharpen. But with that luminance trick, look at that. We get a beautiful clean photograph, we sharpen the detail, and not the colors. Right now I'm going to show you how to create a progressive blur on the background of a photograph with photorealistic results. There's a couple of tools inside of Photoshop. One of them makes it really easy to create the blur, but another one renders it more realistic to what you would get photographically. Let me show you how to combine the two. So why don't we create a duplicate layer just by dragging that into the new layer icon or hitting Control J, Command J to copy that background. And then we're going to choose Filter. And then we're going to choose the Blur, but we're going to keep going to Blur Gallery. Now you'll see an option called Field Blur. Now this will apply a blur across the entire image. You can adjust the blur by just changing that little wheel. But we don't want to blur the entire image. We want to blur the background while keeping the foreground sharp. 
So if we move our pointer away and click, it will add a second point. Hold down Control Command and double click in the center and that will reduce it to zero. And now we get a progressive blur going across. Now, if you want to change the angle of the blur, take the blur and rotate it around that pin. Notice how we're changing the direction of that blur. So we want to blur our background. I'm going to take it a little further apart. Notice the further apart, the more progressive, the closer together, the more abrupt. So let's just bring that back so we get something maybe a little bit more realistic. All right, I like the blur, but it's not the most photographically realistic blur that Photoshop can offer. So what we want to do is take this data and use it. So at the top, it says save mask to channels. Click that and click OK. Now we can get rid of this blur. In this case, I'm just going to hide it so you can see the difference. And let's go down to our background. Once again, I'm just going to duplicate it just to preserve the background. And now we're going to perform a different type of blur. But first of all, look in the channels and you'll see the blur mask was generated. That's what we're going to use. So choose filter. And this time we're not going to use the blur gallery. Under blur, we're going to use our lens blur. So the lens blur gives the most photorealistic blur available in Photoshop. It just really looks like it came from a camera. So what we want to do is go under the depth map. Under source, you're going to choose the blur mask. That's the mask that we created earlier. So we can reuse this. And if you want and you have specular highlights in the background, you can even create realistic looking bokeh just by rolling back on the threshold a little bit. And you can see how it starts to look more realistic, like what you would get from a camera. Let's change that to more accurate for a better result and click OK. Now, if we look at this compared to the other one. Okay. So this way, we're able to combine the tools from the two blurs and get the best of both worlds. Have you ever had a number of images open inside of Photoshop and you want to combine them into one document? Maybe you want to make a grid or something like that. Let me show you the easy way to do it. I used to do it this way. I would drag it into the tab, hold down the shift key. All right, now we've got two layers and then I would go back and I would do it over and over again until everything was combined. Let me show you a much quicker way to do that. Choose file, scripts, load files into stack. Now, rather than navigating and finding files, just choose add open files. And here's all our open files. And then click OK. And now Photoshop will build one big, huge document here with all of those in there. If you want to see how many layers, click on here and select layer count. We have nine layers. So why don't we make a grid? I'm just going to drop the size of this one down. All right, let's just control drag and then we can just drag these images out and then we're going to automatically align and distribute. This will align the left. This will space them evenly. Let's grab the next row, control drag. And see how easy it was to build a grid out of all of those images. So I'm curious, what was your favorite tip out of these five tips? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to the cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any tutorials from me. And if you guys like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.